on YouTube. Fine, it's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to smash that like button. Definitely watch the video to the end to hear the full story. Let's get right into it. Juvenile crimes all over the world. Teenagers get locked up for serious charges, in which in some cases, they can be charged as adults. Depending on the nature of the crime, some teens get put in programs and juvenile facilities. They say they rehabilitate, but a lot of times, it's really a battleground getting them ready for adult prison. Sometimes a person 16 or 17 years old has the mind of a 10 year old, depending on upbringings or learning delays, which leads to the question, should a teenager with a low IQ, mental health problems and behavioral problems be given a life sentence in prison? And on this episode of Hood Tales, we will be discussing the case of a young man named Deontay Green an alleged crime spree in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that shot the community. According to sources, Deontay would get jammed up in 2017 for a few theft charges. Since it wasn't anything major, he would be released not long after. The young man would allegedly go on a crime spree that would change his and other people's lives in the community. At just 16 years old at the time, Deontay would go out on October 1st, 2017 and for reasons unknown, allegedly started to rack up charges. Starting with stealing a vehicle from an older couple. Then the same day, going to another elderly couple's home, forcing them to get in the car with a blicky and taking them, driving them to the ATM to withdraw cash. While at the ATM, as Deontay was waiting, another customer saw that the couple was older and tried to assist in helping them but the Good Samaritan would get a blicky put on them and be robbed as well. After returning to the couple's home, other things allegedly took place with the woman before Deontay decided to leave, but end up at another home. Shane and Darcy Anderson. Shane, a broken arrow school teacher and a family with kids inside the home that day were all in separate rooms. When allegedly Deontay approached Darcy in the garage demanding money before going through the house into the living room where Shane was somehow getting into a struggle and Shane was unfortunately shot and killed on the scene. Tulsa police would eventually link the crimes to Deontay after another young couple was robbed and the blicky was found in the parking lot. The couple pointed out Deontay and with video surveillance from the ATM and the home invasions and fingerprints, Deontay was facing some real trouble. In the interrogation room with police, the young man was questioned without an adult present though. And with Deontay, he would start confessing to how he committed the alleged crimes in hopes he would be sentenced to juvenile placement. As the case went on with the charges against him, the young man was charged as an adult, facing robbery and hit charges. And with the community and victims speaking out, things were not looking good for Deontay. His lawyer read out in court that the young man wanted everyone to know he wasn't a monster and was just a misunderstood, misguided youth trying to find his way. But at the time, 18 years old and being locked up two years, Deontay entered a blind guilty plea for murder and 18 other charges and was sentenced to life plus 290 years for the crimes. His mother and stepfather outraged at the amount of time stating Deontay was a good kid but with his father in prison most of his life, then coming home, being hit by police and passing away. Also the young man's grandmother passing away when he was around 10 or 11, led him to a few petty juvenile charges in which the state pointed out he had been getting in trouble since age 11. And prosecutors felt the crimes elevated. As he got older, Deontay's supporters felt like 10 or 20 years would have been fair but the victim's families felt like justice was served. Back in 2020, Deontay and his attorney tried to appeal the conviction. After it was said, the young man had a low IQ for his age and didn't understand what a blind plea was. And he wanted a jury trial, but the appeal was denied. Rest in peace to the victim. I send my prayers and condolences to the family. More of this story, even as a young man, we only get one chance at life. The courts do not care what you've been through or what you going through, or if you can be rehabilitated. It's all about a conviction. So y'all let me know, do you think a life sentence for something you did as a kid is fair? And if so, let me know why in the comments. 
And if not, let me know why as well. But we gotta remember, we gotta succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tub. Man, it's a messed up story all around the boy, you feel me? Rest in peace to the man that lost his life, definitely. You know, they painted a picture. Well, they trying to say that they had surveillance footage at the home of the family. And they saying that his children was home, the man, you know, first his wife got approached in the garage, you know, that's where it all started at. And somehow he heard the commotion and he ran up and tried to protect his family. And in the interrogation room, when Deontay was talking to the detective, he told him that the man grabbed him, yoked him up, put him on the wall. He got scared and he let off one shot, but he said the man was still moving. So he ain't think nothing of it. So he got up out of there, but the man unfortunately passed away, you know? And a lot of people were saying, well, you know, he was young, he was scared. His parents weren't in the interrogation room with him. He was 16 years old at the time. And they trying to say that the conviction was a little too much. He got life plus 290 years. That's a lot of time, you feel me? And at the end of the day, you know, I got convicted as a juvenile, you feel me? What they do, they'll hold you, you'll get jammed up. You might be 16, 17, especially if it's a serious charge, they hold you till you 18. That way you can be charged as an adult, you know? And when I was locked up with a lot of other juveniles with serious charges and stuff like that, a lot of times when you talk to your attorney or you try to see if they gonna send you to a juvenile facility, they already have their mind made up what they gonna do with you as soon as you get through that. Which, I mean, at the end of the day, man, when you accused of taking a life, it get real, you feel me? So this was an interesting case because a lot of people in the community felt as though he was guilty. And a lot of people were saying, well, he got a low IQ. You know, he should be given a second chance. Not saying a smack on the wrist, but you feel me, like for something like this, you know, where somebody has lost their life and he did confess, but maybe just not a life sentence. But yeah, man, I mean, at the end of the day, you feel me, I understand, you know, it's victims and situations and people get traumatized when stuff like this happens, you know? So I ain't picking no sides, you know? I'm just letting y'all know what I've been through in the justice system and what I see and what do happen to a lot of juveniles. But y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. This your boy Tony, two times. Love, fam, I'm out.